a multi-dimensional array is basically an array of subarrays. What if you had such an array and you needed to flatten it, take all of the elements and include them in a single array without any of the subarrays? That is the problem we will solve in this tutorial. The solution involves recursion and uses other syntax in interesting ways. So let's jump into it. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript. As I always say, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, I've provided a Patreon link. And one more thing, I've begun publishing JavaScript articles on Medium. So if you would like additional resources, please follow me there. Now, flattening a multidimensional array can be quite difficult to achieve efficiently. The flat method of arrays was built for this purpose and works well to a certain extent. But to do it efficiently, we need to know the depth of the subarrays. Let's look at the flat method first, and then we'll talk about how we would find the depth. So here's the array we're going to use an example. As you can see, we have multiple subarrays in here. Here's the first subarray right there, and then there's one inside of that, and then there's another inside of that. And then this subarray over here is at the same level as this first one. And so a lot of subarrays inside of this multidimensional array. Now, the flat method can help us flatten this out. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll do it at the console here. And if I just type in test array dot flat like this, it's going to flatten the array one level. So as you can see, this one here, that array there that started with the two is put into the main array. And also this one at the end, because those were on the same level. Those were one level deep within the array. However, all of the others are still arrays, as we can see when we open this up. We can see that those arrays continue there. So it doesn't flatten it completely. Now, if we knew the depth of the subarrays, we could take care of that using test array. We do flat and then we specify the depth. And let's say I enter four. Well, when we press return, then we get what we're after. It flattens all of the elements and puts them in a single array without subarrays. So that works great, except we're guessing at what the depth is that we should use. And so guessing at that obviously is not something we can do when we're writing a program that needs to be able to flatten an array. So what we need is a function that will determine the depth of the array. And I discovered this function or the, the main idea of this function on Stack Overflow the other day. It works quite slick, but it is difficult to understand because it uses recursion and it uses some other concepts that we're going to talk about. And so those concepts that we'll be using here, as I mentioned, recursion is one. The other one is finding the max number in an array and then the map method as well. And I have tutorials on all three of those things. So if those are new ideas to you, take a look at those tutorials and I've linked to those in the description. So let's look at setting up that function. And I'm gonna just call it get array depth. And we'll be able to use this function to get the depth of an array and its subarrays and thereby we can use the flat method with it to immediately flatten that array. So what is going to happen is we'll pass in an array. All right, now as I mentioned, we're going to use recursion for this. Now recursion means that we'll call this function from inside itself. And that is really the way to solve this because we need to loop through multiple subarrays and we don't know how many there are. So it's difficult to set up a loop because we don't know the depth that we're dealing with here. And so we use recursion in a situation like this and it, it works very well. Once again, I have tutorials on recursion you can refer to. So we're gonna be calling this from inside the array. So what we wanna do every time it gets called, we wanna check this variable here, this array variable, and see if it is an array. 
So that's the first thing we're going to do is use this is array static method of arrays to check to see if that's array. Now the reason we want to check to see if it's array because we're going to do something different if it is an array than if it's not an array. So for example, if it's not an array, we're going to return zero. So what we want to do here is we want to be able to add up numbers that will give us the depth. So we return zero when it's not an array. Now when would it not be an array? Well, we're going to be going through every single element and testing if it's an array. So when we first pass it in, it's going to look at this main array and that's going to be an array. But then we'll start going through the elements. This is not an array, but then the next one is an array, okay? And so when it's not an array, we return a zero because we want to, we don't want to count that. All right. Then this is what we do if it is an array. We return a one. But what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to add that to, and here's where things get a little bit tricky. We want to cycle through every element in the array. And so we're going to use the map method of arrays to do that map will go through each element in an array, do something to it, and then it will return an array. And so this is going to return an array here. So I'm not through here. I need to add more to this, but I want to start at this part of it. So we're going to map through whatever array is passed in and what function are we going to apply to each element as it, as it iterates through each of these elements? Well, we're going to apply this. So this is where a recursion comes in. We're going to call that. So we're going to go through, map through every single element. All right. And it's going to call this function on each of those. If it's not an array, it will return zero. If it is an array, well, then we do this again. And we start mapping through these, finds another array. It's an array, so it starts mapping through again. So you can see how the recursion is building up here. All right. Now, in addition to mapping through those every time it encounters an array, it returns a one plus what? Well, everything else that gets returned is either going to be a zero or in the case, if it finds another array at the same level, it will return a one for that. And we just want to get one from each level. Everywhere there's array, in each level, we want to get one for that. And so the way we do that, because this returns an array of ones and zeros, we're gonna spread that out with the spread operator. And then we only wanna get one of those ones. We're gonna use math.max. Basically math.max returns the maximum number, the largest number in a list of numbers. And we turn that, this array into a list of numbers We'll have zero and ones. One will be the largest number. So that one will get added to that. Okay. So that's how our recursion is going to work. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to jump out here again. And now if I, if I just run get array depth, and I pass in test array like this, what's it going to return? Well, if I refresh the page so that it actually exists, and then we run it, it will return four. Okay, so now we can do test array dot flat, and then inside the parentheses here, we can run get array depth and pass in test array to that to get the depth of it. And what does that return? That flattens our entire array for us because now we're passing in the right depth for that. So bit difficult function here. At first look, it can be very confusing. So make sure you understand those three concepts, recursion, how to find the maximum number from an array of numbers, and then also the map method, how the map method is going to iterate through each of those. And then I think you'll be able to, to understand this. All right. If you're looking for more JavaScript content, remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. I've got a brand new course that is getting great reviews. So go ahead and check that out. 
Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release new tutorials as often as I can. And thanks for watching.